Welcome back to Tipton Bros. Today, we'll be concluding our two-part series on grenades utilized by the Empire of Japan during the Second World War. This grouping is in no way complete, and merely highlights the most widely documented Japanese grenades. Again, construction, function of the device, and effectiveness in combat will be provided. Before we begin, I must disclose that I am no expert and never claim to be. Now, let's get into it. Kicking off part 2 of our series on Japanese grenades is the Type 3 High Explosive Anti-Tank Grenade. Developed in late 1943, the Type 3 was the first true anti-tank grenade adopted by the Japanese Empire. While one could argue the Type 99 magnetic grenade was Japan's original anti-tank weapon as it predates the Type 3, it was more of a jack-of-all-trades, not specifically designed for anti-tank use. The Type 3, on the other hand, employed a shaped charge, the sole purpose of which was to disable allied tanks or armored vehicles. Taking the form of a teardrop, the Type 3 was a straightforward and bare-bones construction. At its base sat a thick wooden plug followed by a steel cone, which helped direct the explosive. The main charge was cast around the cone, and finally, the impact fuse would be threaded onto the top of the grenade body. This threaded cap had roughly two dozen punched holes, where a basic hemp tail was woven through. This aided the Type 3 in flight and marginally improved aerodynamics. No safety measures were present on all three variants of the Type 3. So, once the pin was removed, the only thing keeping its user from violent dismemberment was a relatively light creep spring. To compound this, Japanese ordnance became less reliable as the war progressed, with Allied bombing hampering the already material-starved Japanese production. So, when handling a Type 3 anti-tank grenade, use caution and step with sure footing. As previously stated, the Type 3 platform had three variants, the Type A, or Ko, the Type B, or Otsu, and the Type C, or Hei. All differed in length and weight, but generally were around 15 centimeters long with a completed weight of 850 grams or 1.9 pounds. The A and B variant of the Type 3 utilized a TNT RDX mixture among other fillings, while the C type was packed with picric acid, which would have been particularly nasty. The Type 3 saw service in rather limited numbers, but was said to be quite effective. Post-war testing supported this claim, with the Type 3 being able to punch through roughly 3 inches of armor. They are quite rare today, and would fetch around 4 to 5 figures at auction. Following the Type 3, we have selected the 40mm High Explosive Anti-Tank Rifle Grenade, paired with the Type 2 Cup Launcher. This was essentially a copy of the German rifle grenade system, which the Japanese thought highly of. They shortened the gas cup and increased the twist rate of the rifling, but for all intents and purposes, this is a direct clone of the German Scheißbecker design. The interior of the 40mm heat rifle grenade was like most shaped chargers of the day, very comparable to the previous Type 3. A steel cone to direct the explosive energy, the main charge of RDX TNT mixed explosive amongst others, and an impact fuse which was armed and fired. Obviously, the Japanese 40mm anti-tank grenade is far more complex than three components, but for today's purposes, it will do. Beyond this, information becomes quite sparse. The 40mm rifle grenade was painted black with a yellow ring and is often confused with the Japanese cluster bomb of the same general form and paint scheme. I would estimate the explosive mass is comparable to the Type 97 hand grenade of 57 grams based on size alone. Of course, with the 40mm high explosive anti-tank rifle grenade, the explosive energy would be far more concentrated because of the implementation of the shape charge design. As for the Type 2 cup discharger, it was issued in decent quantity alongside the older Type 100 grenade discharger. The Type 2 was introduced late in the war and subsequently was produced in lower numbers than the Type 100 grenade discharger. Both the Type 2 cup launcher and 40mm anti-tank rifle grenade are an elusive pair in today's market. Next, the shortest entry on today's list, the Type 97 training grenade. Constructed out of a porcelain-like plaster, this training aid was made to resemble the Type 97 hand grenade in both shape and weight. It was coated with a matte black finish and fitted with a pull cord and pin. More than likely, it was used to instruct soldiers on proper handling and throwing techniques. Small groupings of the Type 97 training grenade have been excavated from known Japanese naval bases, but remain near unobtainium with only a handful of known examples. Now, the Type 99 hand and rifle grenade, in addition to the Type 100 grenade discharger. The Type 99, or Kiska hand grenade, as it was called by Allied soldiers, was the modular successor to the Type 91. It was referred to as the Kisker Grenade by Americans because several examples were located on Kiska Island in the Aleutians post-Japanese occupation in 1942. The Type 99 hand grenade is comparable to the Type 97 in nearly every facet, explosive filling, fuse mechanism, and fill weight, just to name a few. 
It only strays when comparing the smooth cast iron body of the Type 99 to the panel riddled body of the Type 97, reminiscent of a pineapple. The Kiska hand grenade has a 4 to 5 second fuse delay, a 57 gram explosive filling, and a total weight of roughly 1 pound. Some documented examples of the Type 99 were said to have substituted the explosive filling with cast picric acid. These examples were few and far between. The Type 99 grenade also suffered from the same ailments as the Type 97, being underpowered and dealing with unreliable fuse burn time. The Kiska grenade, unlike the Type 97, could be used in the Type 100 grenade discharger. The Type 100 grenade discharger is probably the most unorthodox design of the conflict. It utilizes a gas trap system. In function, a Type 99 grenade would be placed base down with the pin pulled into the cup. A live, standard round would be fired and travel through a small tube parallel to the grenade discharger. Gas would be vented into the bottom of the cup, and the forward momentum of the grenade would set the delay fuse. Not a perfect system, but effective. A personal favorite, both aesthetically and functionally. To wrap up today's list, another short entry. The Type TB Frangible Gas Grenade. From what I could gather, these were simple glass vessels, usually spherical in shape. The Japanese opted to use prussic or hydrocyanic acid, chemical compound, hydrogen cyanide. Most frangible gas grenades produced smoke or were incendiary during the Second World War. But the Japanese were one of the few nations to use the platform to carry poison gas. They weren't too big on the rules of war. The Type TB, filled with hydrocyanic acid, could clear a pillbox or foxhole in seconds and deal fatal damage in the same amount of time. Prussic acid is a clear liquid that vaporizes when exposed to open air and would clear an enemy position even with an indirect throw. Truly a terrifying concept that a glass sphere with a seemingly harmless clear liquid could instill such fear and animosity for the enemy. We hope you've enjoyed today's video concluding our series on grenades utilized by the Empire of Japan during the Second World War. While we have covered a majority of Japanese grenades, we hope to discuss other Japanese ordnance in the near future. We are a small channel, so a like is greatly appreciated, and recommendations or criticism is always welcome. As always, I am no expert, and never claim to be. Until next time, on Tipton Bros.